The Stages of Whale Decomposition Amazing as they are, whales and other cetaceans contribute greatly to the health of the ocean's ecosystems. Think about the humpback whale as an example. Because whales force prey to the surface, seabirds can take advantage of a novel feeding mechanism known as the net bubble method. They also play an important part in the delivery of essential nutrients. When a whale dies, do you ever think about what happens to it? When a whale dies, its body becomes a new habitat for a wide variety of organisms. Is curiosity about whale falls keeping you here? Curious to know more? Now let's get deeper into this. Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update. Let's start the video. A whale fall is what? Animals that inhabit the ocean floor are known to use whale carcasses as a food source. In the ocean, whale falls occur when carcasses sink to the ocean floor, specifically in the bathial or abyssal zone. At depths of 2,000 meters or more, these creatures gain from the whales' depths because the carcasses provide a ready supply of food. Researchers speculate that whale falls served as a stepping stone for deep sea organisms to colonize the ocean floor. The further study increases the number of newly reported species and the number of possible commercial uses. How come different periods of colonialism? By producing strong organic enrichment in a relatively limited space, a dead whale effectively builds a new and rich habitat that is followed by subsequent waves of colonization. Species in these regions resemble those found near hydrothermal vents. Research has identified three distinct phases associated with whale dives. It is estimated that a single whale death can affect up to 400 different animal species. Scientists have calculated that one whale corpse represents the nutritional equal of 2,000 years' worth of typical biological waste settling on the seafloor. Stage 1 – The Age of Mobile Scavengers During the first phase, it's the mobile scavenger species that thrive. At this point, a swarm of hagfishes, some lithodid crabs and rat tailfish, big sleeper sharks and millions of amphipods have settled on top of the dead whale. Animals like this are to blame for the demise of the human body's fatty tissues. Their daily caloric intake is 40 to 60 kilograms. It lasted four months in a five-ton carcass and nine months to two years in a 35-ton one. Stage two, the opportunity enhancing phase. As the second stage progresses, dense colonies of polychaete worms, cetaceans, crustaceans, and mollusks like snails cover the bones. Some previously undiscovered species of whale fall specialists have been described. Sediment, which is rich in decaying tissue, provides a tasty meal for these creatures. Stage 3 – The Sulfophilic Process This is the longest phase of whale deaths, lasting anywhere from 10 to 50 years. The breakdown of lipids within the bones by chemosynthetic bacteria using sulfate that generates sulfide is responsible for the so-called sulfophilic stage, which derives its name from this byproduct. The sulfide makes it possible for a wide variety of organisms, including mussels, and two worms to thrive there. Over 30,000 creatures were discovered in a single skeleton. So, several new species identified. New species of whales have been described, as mentioned up top. A small subset of those will be presented here. That's the anemone, by the way, a species known as Anthosactus piercy. It is tiny, white, and cube-shaped. The fact that this is the first anemone ever discovered on a whale skeleton gives it great significance. New species belonging to the genus Osidax have also been found. The colloquial moniker for them, bone-eating zombie worms, describes their function perfectly. Despite lacking eyes and a mouth, these creatures display reddish plumes that serve as gills as a type of green root system, through which symbiotic bacteria digest proteins and lipids within the bone, providing food for the worms. The animals always appear in their macroscopic female form but each one houses dozens of male reproductive cells. The bristle worm, or Ophriotroca, Craig Smith, is another incredibly impressive worm. They have no special adaptations, yet it is believed that they dominate the ecosystems around whale falls. Finally, consider the gastropod Ruby Spira, a specialized mollusk of only 3 to 4 centimeters in length that lives off of whale falls. This is it, everyone. So, what do you think? Leave a comment and let us know. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that. Also, put on the notifications because the next video is going to be a great one.